to acquire the report you get. Um, all right. So today we're going to be looking at the angle between planes. So if I had this, so plane here, the plane here, how would I find the angle between them? Yeah. Make an edge view of both uh, planes. Make an edge view of both. Yeah, I want to look at both planes from the edge, right? So how could I do that from here? So if I had this view, how could I look at it and see both this plane and this plane as an edge? Yep. Make a uh, pulling line perpendicular to the one to one edge that you this edge here. Yeah. yeah. So my line of intersection. If I look straight down my line of intersection, don't I see that angle? So that's what we're doing. So if you have the line of intersection, it's easy. You just do an in, a point view of it and look straight down it. So what do you need to be able to do a point view about something? So if you want to look at straight down a line, what do you need? So if I have this line, what? how do I need that line to be for, for me to be able to look straight at it? What is this line? As you're looking at it right now, right now, what is that? The edge. The edge. We have remember we have names for different types of lines. Is this a true length line? Yeah, it's only inclined in one direction. Because in the top view, that line would be parallel to the floating plane. So in the front view, it's true length. Yeah, true. So if I have a true length line, I can look perpendicular, or kind of perpendicular to it, or whatever that is, to it, to see it as a point, right? So that's what we're going to do. We've got a nice example here, two planes with a line of intersection between them. So this one is parallel to the floating line. Parallel to the floating line. So that means down here, that's true length. Right? Label it just so we keep track of it. <clears throat> so now I'm going to do a UCS. First, maybe connect some points. Yes, object, the <coughs> line, new folding plane, right? I'm going to offset from there to there. That's my line of intersection, right? Bring it out. This corner out. Come up from that. Measure down. I'll set it. Make sure I get that intersection, not that midpoint that was right next to my line. This plane, right? Because that this point is that corner and that corner. That point is that one. So just connecting those two gives me that first plane. <coughs> Make sure I use my end point. Now that's plane one, and now I can get rid of that line. Offset from there to there, from there to that one. That's plane two.
get my angle between those. Okay. What? We're not making drawings, so it doesn't matter. Remember, this is stuff. Most of the time, when you're doing descriptive geometry like this, and you're trying to find something, you're just doing it for your own information. So it doesn't matter what size the text is or anything like that. If it did, you take it in your title block, like we do in 4A and 5 and everything else. Most of the time, you just want to know what that number is. And so you just put it on. Um, we could also go in and do an angle here between them. Just give it to us right now so we can see what it is. Now, if your uh, plane's extended further, you, would you want the top and bottom angle, or what do you mean? Like the they bottom? Put yeah. Cross. Um, doesn't matter. What is? What about what's? The, what do we know about those two angles? They're the same. They're the same. Those are the same. So, doesn't matter. If I cared about. The angle between it and that line, then I do it right. But I really care about that angle. Same as that folding plane? Could those two be considered the same thing? Did I, did I make this, this measurement there, that measurement there? Right? So wouldn't this side be the same as that side? So wouldn't this measurement be the same as the measurement between that plane? And that that edge, because here that plane is going up and down. So because this was the true length line in the top view, and then now I'm looking at it in view. That now this represent is the same as that. So I can take that measurement to see what it is from from that from that plane. Actually, that'd be kind of measuring from from the front back to it, right? You guys see that? And that's on page one eleven. Talks about that. Page one eleven has a nice, complicated picture showing that. Yeah, very. <laughs> I'm reading that book. But. Let's just, let's just do it this way. <laughs> this is a truly, or is that parallel to that folding plane? So now we're we're, 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 we're measuring that angle. All right, questions? Okay. All right. So we can do the same thing here, right? What would we need to do? This view or that view? And what line do I need to find a true length of? The intersection. The intersection line, right? So this line, I need to find true length of that. So what do I need to do? I need to make, is my flowing line going to be parallel or perpendicular to that? It's going to be parallel to it, right? So should I do it down here, right here, there, or there? 
that does, does it matter? It doesn't matter if my floating plane is there or there or there or there. Does it affect what I draw? No. Which one should I probably use though? Probably use that one, right? Because if I use this one, it's going to get kind of crowded here. If I use that, it's going to get crowded there. You might as well go up. Get out of the way. Two points for each plane because that should be enough because I'll have the line and at least one of those points won't be on that line. I hope. <laughs> Actually, no, for true length, I need more. I do need them all. So Yes, object, that line. Another way to do it, offset your line first. And then when you draw a line, you just go straight to it. Same as step. Did I really need any of those other ones though? Yeah, huh? So I need that to go to the next group. So I kind of need everything. I should, so I should have made it all go. that line now this is line is true length. <clears throat> so now I can do you 
CS object that line. That gives us our line of intersection point. I did this one because when I did over here, it's going to be really close. Because I, I could do the whole plane, right? Coming in at the same, same angle as if I did just one corner from each one. If I did do this other corner here. space to work with. So that's why I did this other side so I can have more space to work with. So there's my, my two planes I can measure that angle. And we knew from here that they were pretty close, right? We saw here that they weren't going like that. They were almost I mean this is an edge view. That one's pretty close to an edge view, so we knew the angles were going to be pretty close to each other. Okay, questions? intersect somewhere? Yeah. <coughs> yeah. They just not they don't just they just don't intersect within the plane that we drew. Because the planes can go forever, they're gonna hit sometime or else it both be edge views here. So what's the angle between them? So what was the first thing we needed that we talked about? But it was the first thing we said we needed. No, but we don't have an intersection line before that. What was the first thing we needed? Angle. No, before that. What do we see here? No. So before that, the very first thing you said, Doc. Edge view. We need both planes and edge view, right? So right now, we have line of intersection. We got a nice shortcut to get to it. 
But if you don't have a line of intersection, how can we get to edge views of both planes? first and find an edge view. And actually, we've got an edge view of the lawn plane, right? Right here, we've got an edge view of the green plane. Don't we? Yep. So we're like 90% there. All now all we need to do is find an edge view of that plane. See this plane true size, but we're also going to copy this line onto this one, so we can use that to find a true length line on this plane that we could use. Because when we go from, remember back to when we were doing the stuff in the Venner, remember when we got to an edge view, you did a true size, then you went off and you get an edge view, then a true size and edge view, you just keep going between a true size and edge view. So whenever you look at a true size from the side, you're looking at an edge view. And so, from here, if we make it a true size of that one, any, any view off of that plane will be an edge view. So we're going to copy this line onto the red plane so we can find where that line would be. Then we can come off that and get an edge view of both. So, let's just do that. I'm going to draw some lines here so we can measure. that when we get to it. I don't know who the guy was that made up this exercise. Stuff so close. And that's not very smart, is it? That is the same line. Yep, because that's true length. Those are really close to being parallel. I mean, it, it's that close. <laughs> so, but now we have that where that line starts at that other vertex and comes down and hits this edge of the plane.
I would draw my lines to the right endpoints. Now do you agree that that's plane one, true size? Plane two is not true size, correct? Now I can use this point and come up until I hit that edge, and I can go back there, right? That's is that true? You know, it was connected to that vertex, and it was connected to that edge here. And that edge and that edge are the same. And I brought it up and I connected it back. Now is that line true length? Yes, right? Because that line was parallel to this line, which was the one that we made the floating plane parallel to. So now we can come this way, perpendicular to that, to get an edge view of that which would give us an edge view of the plane. If that line is in the plane, you just need, you just need a true length line that's in the plane. How do we know that we're going to get an entry of this one again? Yeah. Oh, because look at this distance here. Isn't those distances the same all the way? So when I offset it from the next view, I'm going to use these distances, and so it has to be an edge view on the next the next view, right?
Which one should I do? Should I do this one or that one next? Uh, I should probably do this one, right? Yep. It's the furthest one away when I'm looking up in this view. So I'm going to do that one. So that was there, there. Just to make sure, we'll offset there, there, uh -huh. and do a line here. And look, it hits on that intersection. So that is an edge view. Okay. Now we have two edge views. We can measure that angle. degrees. Can we find a point of intersection now where they would hit? Yeah. If I just do a fill it with a zero, I can see where they would have hit. Maybe I want to just draw a new line <coughs> that are That's where my intersection point would have been. And I can actually take that project it back, kind of, can I? So, but, but I can at least measure the angle now. So. Any questions? So why might we want to use this? What would be the use of finding the angle between two points? Do you imagine anything where you might possibly want to find the intersection of two planes and what angle it is? What? Roof. Roof on a house. Perfect example. You got. Like especially if you're doing a gable with another piece coming into it or something. You've got so got a piece in there. That's a pretty easy one, right? But what if you've got that and you need to find that angle for there? Or you, and then you've got a, a chimney coming up or a chimney coming there or, or another dormer in it or something like that. Then you've got to find out what angle that is. <clears throat> the length of that, that piece of wood that you need to cut for. So that's where this true length and, and angle between planes comes in. That's a perfect example of, of finding out how it's going to fit on something. Um, where did I do that thing? by hand the long way. But sometimes in order to do things in 3D, you have to be able to do some of the basics of this to figure out where they're going to go. So that's why we're doing it this way still. Okay? So they were on this building where all the different panes were different sizes and angles and 
and things. Uh, so that was like as another good example. But many architecture kind of stuff. Um, and the book, if you want to feel like doing some a lot of work, or the the last practice for the the chapter, it shows some. those planes. It's basically the thing. And so even if you're doing it on the computer, you just have to know figure out how to how to set it up to look at it. Um, because just asking for the angle between those planes isn't going to give you you need to be able to look at it right. So that, that's another good mechanical example of it. Okay. Questions? Go to it.